Hey everybody, Paul Abernathy here. Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for joining me. I know what you want. You want some exam prep questions. You want to test your skills. If you're in the Fast Tracks program, this is going to be old hat for you. So sit back and watch other people do this. But if you want to really challenge yourself, we're going to do five questions. And I'm going to show you how to dissect a question here. Uh, and these are to help you prepare for an electrical exam. Now, if you really want to get proficient in the National Electrical Code, then you're going to want to get into our Fast Tracks program. Um, it is a great program that teaches you what you need to know about the National Electrical Code, and it's a process. Plus, you get to join me on Wednesday nights and ask all the questions that you want, and we go over different questions in the program. Uh, if you have anything that you want to ask about a question you've run into, you're free to bring them to our Wednesday night session, but you can only join us if you're a Fast Track student. Okay, so if you're thinking about taking your exam, or you're a journeyman, you're going to take a master's exam, or you're looking to take an electrical inspector exam, uh, or you just want to get more knowledge on the National Electrical Code, the Fast Tracks programs are the way to go. Check out our website at electricalcodeacademy.com. Again, you see it under the logo over here. Check it out. If you have any questions, feel free to let us know. All right, so let's go on and get into tonight's uh, exam prep questions. Okay. So here's the first question we're going to come into. All right, so what I'm going to do is tell you, you need to pause the video, answer the question, and then come back and play because I'm going to kind of go through these questions because I don't want to drag it out a long time for you because I know your time is important. And I really want to kind of show you how we dissect a question and what it takes to be really proficient. Now, a fast track student will look at this question and automatically know how to dissect it. That's what we teach. So let's look at this question. It says, a legally required standby system shall have a standby power ready within blank seconds after normal power fails. Now remember, pause this video. Go look it up yourself, right? But what you know is what? That you have emergency standby, you have legally required standby, and you have optional. Now what you might have outside your house, that's optional. Okay, there is no time requirement for when that kicks on, okay, as far as the requirements for a transfer of power, right? Now, when it comes to emergency systems, it's within a certain number of seconds. When it comes to legally required standby systems, it's within a certain number of seconds. Now, process of elimination, you can, if you know which one the emergency is, you're good to go. Uh, and then you can look for the other because you know that Stuff like this is stuff that we learn in the program. So this should be an easy one to answer and move on. But we're going to dissect it. So first of all, what we want to do is make sure you got your code book. Uh, I don't have the index on the electronic version. So we're going to be looking it up in the code here. Uh, and then we'll go to the code on the NEC link uh, when necessary if we need to look at some code references. Okay. So first thing you should do, if you don't know the answer right off the bat, remember our three-wave process. If you know this answer, you mark it and move on but we're gonna dissect it. Okay, so legally required, that seems like that's the root of this question. It's asking me about a time specific in seconds when it comes to legally required standby systems. So, in the index, we know there's an emergency systems, we know there's legally required systems, and we know there are optional systems. Let's go and see what we've got under legally required. Let's look under L, or legally required, in the index. Do it with me. I'm gonna look it up, and remember, Pause the video. You can come back. All right, so I see that there is a legally required standby system in the code. And I notice that it's Article 701. Now here you'll notice that there's very little underneath it in the index. We're looking for a specific amount of time for that transfer of power. So we're looking down here and we see, okay, well, the question is about power and whether or not it's coming from the primary, which is the, the normal source of power, or whatever it is that's our standby power, okay? So if you look down here, you'll also notice that this is not a very big, so that's the first thing I teach people when we're dissecting questions. If you identify that 701 is very small, there's not a lot of info in there, don't bang your head trying to go through all the possibilities in the index if you just don't know. What you do know, it's 701. And you look at it and you realize this is not a very big one at all. You notice that source of power kind of is what the question's about. It says part three, okay? Well, it's not very many parts in here. So I'm gonna go to part three in um, 701. And that's where we're all gonna go now. So let's go on and do that. We know the question's about power. So I'm gonna go to the code. 
All right, so we're going to go into the code here and I'm going to go up. This is what I love about link. Uh, and I'm going to go to 700. And you'll notice here, we've got emergency. We got legally required and we got optional. All right, emergency, legally required. That's what we're questions about. Now, once I get here, I said I was gonna go to part three. So let's jump to part three. And this is part three, sources of power. And here we go, the general requirements. Current supply such as, uh, current supply shall be such that in the event of failure of the normal supply, which is part of our question, uh, to or within the building or group of buildings concerned, Legally required standby power shall be available with the time within the time required for the application, but not to exceed 60 seconds. So 60s is your max. Now you might have a need or a jurisdiction that needs it to be quicker than 60 seconds or whatever the application is necessary, but it's not to exceed 60 seconds. So for the exam question, we're looking for that 60 seconds. Another thing to remember is sometimes the answers can really be helpful because as you start bold scanning, and what is bold scanning? Bold scanning is when we start out and we're looking at the bolds of each section or any subdivision under that, and we look at it to see if it's anything relevant to what's in the question. For example, we know that we're looking at 10 seconds, 60 seconds, 90 seconds, and 120 seconds, that type of thing. So I'm actually bold scanning and then quickly scanning the information to see if I see those references to seconds. That's what we call bold scanning, and it's very um, efficient on an exam, okay? So we went down here, we saw it's 60 seconds, okay? So let's go back to our unit. All right, so here we go, and we're gonna answer this question. We feel pretty confident on what it is. So we're gonna go 60 seconds, and there you go, and there you go, 701.12. The next one. The bending radius for the inner edge of AC cable shall not be less than blank times the diameter of the cable. Okay, so remember, we're talking about AC cable here. Not talking about MC, metal clad. This is AC cable. It's been around a lot longer than MC cable, by the way. Um, so AC cable, what article is that in the National Electrical Code? Pause this video. Go find that article. Now, this is interesting because you could use the table of contents or you can use the index. Now, we're gonna use the index again to do it because again, we wanna kinda of get you conditioned to use the index. So I'm gonna to go to the index in my code and I know that that is a wiring method and that's, that is an armored cable. So I'm gonna go in the index and I'm gonna look for armored cable. And as I look through here, I see aerial, Get my glasses down so I can see. Uh, let's see here. We'll go down through. See if I can find anything that says armored cable. There we go, armored cable. And notice right off the bat, it says article 320. Now, as I start to look down, I see bins. Well, the question is asking me about a bend. So that's where I wanna start my journey. I also notice by looking at it, 320 is not that big. Bold scanning is important here because look, I've got values to use, right? I got a five, an eight, a 10, a 12. I know that we're talking about bending radius, bends. I know we're in AC cable, so I feel good. 320 is where I feel I need to be. So the best way to start this journey for me is if you're in the index like I am, dot 24 section is where we wanna start that journey. So 320.24. That's where we want to be. So let's go to the code really quick. And I'll jump back up here and I'll get us into 320. And just so you can see it, this is armored cable, AC. Here is MC. We're not talking about that. We're right here. Click on it. Now, remember what we said? We want to go down to 24 because that was the bends. And that's where we're going to start. Right here, bending radius. It says bends of type AC cable shall be made such that the cable is not damaged. Now think about this. If you're coming up a framing member, like the side of a stud, and you're gonna turn to go horizontal through the board holes or if they may be punched holes if it's metal studs, that turn has to be a radius turn. 
You can't just bend it right angle. You're going to blow out the back of that convolution on that armor. I tell you what, inspectors look for that. It is a problem because not only does it blow the back end out, but it causes the inner edge to pinch. And that could pinch into the insulated conductors and you're going to have a headache on your hand trying to find that once all of the gypsum boards up or whatever the finished wall material is. Look, we don't want that. We want a nice radius bend. So what do we got to do here? We need to do it so we don't damage the cable. Okay, makes sense. It says the radius of the curve on the inner edge of the bend shall not be less than five times the diameter of the AC cable. All right, makes sense. So let's kind of come back and, and, and think about this for a second. All right, so what we did was we want to, where does it say that in the code? You looked at it in the code in 320. Um, I want to go look at it in the code, make sure that we all look at it. So let me go on and uh, get you to where we need to be in link real quick again. So you can see, there we go, right there, 320.24. We looked it up. You looked it up in your code book. And here's what we looked up. It says, bins of type AC cable shall be made such that the cable is not damaged. We covered that. And the radius of the inner curve or the inner edge of the bin shall not be less than five times the diameter of the type AC cable. Now, I'm going to paint you a visual picture because people like that. So here's a stud. And if you can see it, my pin representing a stud, okay? And as I run the cable here, and I'm going to turn and go horizontal, I have to make sure that it comes out and turns radiuses through it, okay? Because if you think of a ball, the radius is from the center out in all directions, center out. That's a radius, okay? It's the radius of the ball, the round perimeter of the ball. It's the radius from the center out. The diameter is measured across the face of the cable assembly. That's going to be given to you from the manufacturer. You go to the manufacturer. For example, if I had a cable that was a half inch diameter. Now, remember, I want to convert this into decimals. So I'm going to take the one and divide it into two. So I'm going to take the one, divide it into two. That is 0.5. Now, if it's five times the diameter, I'm just going to take that 0.5 times five. That's 2.5. So from the, from the stud, I'm going to measure out two and a half inches. And that's kind of on a swivel. So that means that that AC cable has to bend as if it's following that 2.5 inches all the way around, maybe like the half of a ball as it turns and then goes horizontal. It cannot come in and turn right angle. It's got to come up and radiously curve and you have to maintain that radius of what? In this case, 2.5 inches, but it really is what? five times the diameter of the cable. And you get that from the manufacturer. So remember, five times. Now, with MC cable, the interlocked, it's seven times. Uh, and then if it's, of course, smooth or corrugated, it can change there as well. So be careful what you're working with. Make sure that you don't mistake AC cable for MC cable. I know that sounds like it shouldn't happen, but people do. Don't do that, okay? Remember, we're talking AC in this example. All right, let's go back to our question, All right? So we're gonna go back to our example and we're going to start, we're gonna answer this thing. All right, so obviously we saw it's five, so we click it and there you go. 320.24, boom, we're on a roll. Next, okay. Next question is a conductor carrying 30 amps and 0.5 ohms will uh, with will lose blank watts of power. I right, don't overthink this one now. It hasn't given you any length. It hasn't given all it's saying is look, if I have 30 amps and I have 0.5 ohms of resistance out of that 30 amps, what is the power loss in watts? Now this is where you need to have a power wheel. Now, most exams give you a power wheel. It's like this, right? Now, we're going to use, since we have values that we know and we're searching for power, then we're going to use the current squared times the resistance, okay? So, in our case, current squared, okay, 30 times 30, okay? And we're going to do what? Multiply that by 0 0.5. So, let's do that. So, it would be 30 times 30 equals 900 times 0 
that is 450. That is the wattage, 450 watts. Now, this type of question is a theory question. Now, we have a great course on electrical theory called the Yellow Fast Tracks. But most exams, you're not going to get a whole bunch of theory questions, but you want to make sure you get them right. So just remember, having a power wheel, if you don't have one and they allow you to write in your code book, write it in your code book um, and uh, kind of keeps you with all the possible questions they could ask you. Because as long as I've got two values, then I can solve the equation. Got to have at least two values. Okay. All right. So that's just an electrical theory type question. So we're going to click 450. And there you go. And again, there you go. It's just electrical theory. Makes sense. All right. Yeah. Don't get totally bogged down when you get on an exam for theory. Um, usually they're going to be pretty straightforward. Ohm's law, Watt's law. As long as you have a power wheel, as long as you understand pi, uh, PIE, and uh, as long as you understand the EIR, as long as you know these different formulas. And if you don't know what those are, we have videos on Ohm's Law over on our channel uh, that you can watch. But if you want to get our exclusive material, you got to do the annual subscription in order to get access to those exclusive videos. Not the ones we do here for free, but the training videos, much more intense. That's over on our website. And of course, the website's right there. So you can jot that down if you really want to get some extra videos. Okay. All right. You're doing good. Let's go to the next one. All right, the next question says, blank cable shall be permitted to be installed as direct burial without any other protection. Okay, now first things first, here's what I like to do. You might already know some of these things, and that's great. Process of elimination can be a really good thing, especially for fast track students, because we learn to dissect things. Now the first little spider sense that you would have had here was, you know that NM cable can't go outside and it can't be buried. So that's off the, already off the table. You know that THHN is not a cable, it's a conductor. So this is talking about a cable. So THHN can't be your answer. So the next thing you've got is either UF or SE. Now you might truly know what UF means, underground feeder, but it also is for underground branch circuits as well. But that's what UF is. And then SE is service entrance. Well, SE cable in itself, the cable assembly, two conductors with a helical wrap, that typically cannot go underground. We're not talking about USE, okay? We just said SE. So the difference is you might have used a process of elimination here, and by doing that, you went with UF cable. But do you know the article that deals with UF cable? Pause the video. Go look it up. This is why flashcards are so great. Flashcards, you start to throw things out. You'll learn NM cable, 334, right? UF, 340, SE cable, 338, THHN falls under 310, and that's the different conductor types. So many things that you just start rattling this stuff off, and you're just going to be so much better on the job, less stress. You're going to be that go-to person, okay? If you're the owner of a business, you need to understand the code. I ain't lying. Now, I'm telling you right now, people that are thinking that, they, that they're, because they can do it with their hands, but they don't know the code, you're selling yourself short. You don't understand the mental part of the game. And that's what the code is about. No way would I want to go under the knife for a surgeon who might be really good, but he has not continued his education, understands what those sensitive nerve endings are, what could happen if he makes a cut at the wrong place. That doesn't happen by just slicing and dicing, folks. They go to school, they learn the mental part. That's what you're doing. You're learning the mental part, and it's fun. Code can be fun. When people post things on social media about code and they don't give a code reference, it's probably showing the fact that they really don't know what it is. They've heard it from somebody. They're regurgitating it. But do you know how to find it? That's when you take the pride. That's when you notice code folks get cocky because they put in the time. They can say code cocky, but they're really code confident, right? So. We could answer this one, but we're gonna go to the code because I wanna find it, okay? Now, again, we're talking about direct burial and we're talking about a cable, right? So I have used the process of elimination. I know it's not NM. I know it's not THHN. Could it be SE? 
and could it be UF? So let's go look at SE first, because they're the only two, UF and SE, if you didn't know what UF was, they're the only two that might make you question it, okay? But I want to show you something. Let's go to SE real quick, all right? So let's go to the code, all right? And I'm going to go on and go to chapter three, and I'm going to go down to 338. There's SE, all right? And I want to show you something right here. All right, we're gonna look at use is permitted and use is not permitted. All right, so here is a use is permitted. Okay, it's dot 10. Remember that, there's a tip for you. In the cable and wiring methods in chapter three, dot 10 is all the permitted uses of a certain type of wiring method. The dot 12 is the uses not permitted. Okay, so that's a little things to keep to memory. All right, so here we go. Use is permitted. Let's go right here. Okay, so we look down and we see use is permitted. And let's see here. We have use is not permitted. All right. Well, here we go. So we're looking more about, we're not getting permission to be underground. We're looking is, do we have something that says we can't be underground? And here you go. Service entrance cable. That's SE cable. We're not talking about USE. That wasn't in the question. See the USE? We are talking about SC. Here's what it says. Number two, underground with or without a raceway. Okay, so service entrance cables shall not, mandatory language, be used under the following conditions or in the following locations. Absolutely cannot use SE cable underground. Even in a raceway underground. Hey, did you know that I'm the inventor of a product called the hybrid cable? It's an SER and a tray cable married together, only available at Encore Wire. Go to EncoreWire.com and inquire about it. Amazing cable, if I do say so myself. It allows you to go from indoors to outdoors, easy transition. It is the first ever SER that can be direct buried. Why? Because the moment it goes outside, it picks up all the property of tray cable. When it comes inside, guess what? It dumps the tray cable and picks up all the properties of SER cable. Beautiful thing. All right, shameless plug. I don't make anything on that patent, so, <laughs> so don't worry about it, okay? So anyway, there we go. So we know it can't be this. All right, so next, we narrowed it down. We're gonna go to 340. And it automatically says underground in it. So we're gonna go use as permitted, and here you go. Right here, type UF cable, for use underground, including direct burial in the earth. Ding, 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 ding. There you go. It looks like our answer right there. All right, let's come back to the, to the question. And let's go on and answer this and get it out of the way. But do you kind of see how we had to dissect those things? And there you go, 340.101, okay? Now, this is important because when we go look at the code, and I will take us back real quick to the code so you can kind of see what's going on. 340.101, that's what gave us the permission. So when you go out on those social media platforms and you want to spout out some things against code, maybe on Trade Hounds or over on TikTok, you're going to get better. Make sure you give people code references so they can go look it up themselves. That way you substantiate your statement. Okay, they cannot argue with you if you post code. I'm just saying, do yourself a favor. All right, let's get back to the, to the exam. Okay, so that was pretty good. Everybody did good there. All right, let's go on to the next one. And let's see here. All right, so the next question we're dealing with is, fixture wire shall not be smaller than what? AWG. Okay, so we're looking at fixture wire. Shall not be smaller than what size? Now, if you're familiar with building wire, you'll know that 14 gauge is the smallest you can have for building wire. 14 is not even given here. So process of elimination will tell you that it's fixture wire. We know that 10 is okay, 12 would be okay, but then there's a 16 and an 18. But where do we go? You ought to know, pause the video, we're talking fixture wire, right? Okay, 
I've got the code. I could go to the index in the front, look under fixture wire. Let's see what's in the, I mean, the table of contents, I should say. Let's go to the back and see what's under fixture wire. Okay, let's see if there's anything under fixture wire. All right, so I'm with you. And I'm going in the back and I'm gonna look and see if there's anything here in the back. And you should be doing this too. Um, get your code book and go look and see if you see anything here under fixture wire. And if it's not, then we'll look around even more. So let's see here, figures, let's see here, fire, let's see, fixed, fixed. Okay, let's go a little more, fixed. And there we go, fixture wire. Hey, check that out. So fixture wire is article 402, and you probably noticed, because I've taught you that, that it's a very small article. Look at it. There's not many references of sections here. It's very, very small. Now, armed with the knowledge of what article it is, armed with the answers, so you know we're looking for wire gauges, you should immediately, you can look at it and go, okay, well, one of them says minimum size right here in the index. It says 402.6, minimum size. Fix your wire shall not be smaller than blank AWG. Guess where I'm going? We're gonna go to 402.6. I tell you, that's where we're going. All right, so let's do that. All right, so I've got the code. And we're gonna go up here and get into 402. Right here, fix your wire. All right, and we're going to dot six. Oh, incidentally, this right here, 402.3 shows you the different types of insulation, the lettering and everything here. If you're wondering what the different types are, TFFN, TFN, all SM, this is where you go. And this table allows you to see the different sizes and insulation thicknesses and whatnot. Very similar to 310.4 when we're looking at things like THHN, XHHW, all that. Very similar, but this is for fixture wire. All right, so we're going down here to minimum size right here. It says fixture wire shall not be smaller than 18 gauge. Pretty straightforward there, right? All right, let's go back to our material, our question. And obviously 16 gauge is one of our answers, right? Okay, so uh, we know that it's 16, but what did it say? Very quickly to jump and say 16, when we both know that it said what? 18. Exactly right. See how quickly it can happen if you jump? We know it's 18. That's what the code said. Again, just to show you. Right there. Not smaller than 18. But when you're pumping through an exam, and you might not be familiar with 18 gauge, your mind may be thinking 16, which is a little bigger than 18, okay? And you're jumping on it, you might get confused. We're not confused. We know the answer. 18 gauge. So we're going to answer this question. We're going to nail it out and we're going to end this lesson. Uh, 18. Boom. There it is. 402.6. Beautiful thing, right? Okay. Let's come back to me. If you found those challenging or you enjoyed them, please subscribe to the channel. Give us a thumbs up. We appreciate it. Share it with other people. If you really want to get into a program that's going to help you learn the National Electrical Code, then you want to join our Fast Tracks program. Let me tell you what. People are paying literally six, seven, and eight hundred dollars for weekend crash courses. Uh, they're paying thousand dollars for DVDs and videos with nobody to ask questions, nobody to interact with, no way to come to live sessions and chime in. We do it every Wednesday night. You can join us. It's optional. It's not part of the program. It's something I just like to do every Wednesday night. You can join me and ask your questions, and I will explain it to you. That's the beautiful thing about our program. So if you think about all of the competency reviews, there's 19 units, I grade every one of them and give you feedback personally, right? I'm the one that's there on Wednesday nights. I'm the one you're gonna get if you wanna call and ask a technical support question. I am always gonna be accessible to my students. I'd love to have you in our program. Till next time, folks, stay safe, God bless, and go to our website, electricalcodeacademy.net or .org or .com. And if you want to join a message boards of great people, check out right here, the sparkyhub.com. Join the family. Great bunch of folks. Till next time, folks, stay safe. God bless.